Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today's video is a response to a viewer request. I had a brilliant viewer request recently which got me really excited and it was to take a look at things that have suffered reputational damage within astrology. I mean, we could even talk about the reputational damage that astrology itself has suffered. You know, I was just thinking about that as I was getting ready to do this video. I was thinking about how the whole, you know, field of astrology has really suffered thanks to, um, you know, these tiny little snippets at the back of like a Cosmo magazine or something, you know, where in, in two lines they'll say, you know, Aries will meet a tall, handsome stranger next week, and that's not astrology. So unfortunately, a lot of people think that's all it is. Of course, that's not all it is. Um, and so the whole thing has suffered major reputational damage. Within astrology, there are many things that have suffered reputational damage, certain signs in particular, which is really a shame um, that that's happened. It's really sad that that's happened because some signs that have a bad reputation, people are missing out on the tremendous beauty uh, that's within those parts of the zodiac. So I want to talk about that today. So today, and I, I mean, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking that it's not just signs, it's things like combustion. You know, what if you've got a mercury that's combust and I've had I've worked with clients one-on-one -on -one and people say oh no does that mean I'm stupid and it's like no 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 not at all no it doesn't mean that you know so people take these negative words debilitation it's another word that really brings people down people think oh no this planet of mine is debilitated and therefore my life is over no that is not true that's not true at all so I've been trying to think about how I want to do this video do I want to say, for example, tackle a few signs and then tackle something like debilitation and combustion and things like that? But I thought, no, why don't we do a three part series? So today is part one where we're going to have a look at the signs. Uh, and I thought I'd take a look. I'd pick a few, a handful of signs that I think have suffered um, and I'll talk you through why. And then I think in the next episode, we'll talk about debilitation. And then the third one, I might look at things like um, combustion and I might pick out a couple of other little things. I'll have a think about what I want to do for the third one. I don't know yet, but let's see how we go. So if you're interested in this topic, stick around. Um, otherwise, you can have a look on the channel. There are other things for you to watch, but um, relax, sit back, relax. I'm going to draw a diagram as I do live on the screen. I like to do that because it's just kind of, we take our time, we relax, you know, we get into things. It's a nice way of putting some space into the video. I like to take time, I like to have space within the video if possible. So I shall draw my diagram. It might be a bit messy, but that's all good. Okay, so I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are. Let's see if I got the number right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's looking good. Okay. Also, I'm going to draw this diagram. This is the diagram that I used in the song series. And at the end of this video, or maybe somewhere within this video, I might be, I know people have those information links and things like that. I'm going to figure that stuff out. So maybe at this point I'll put in a link or something. Um, I'm going to link you through to the song series. You can click on the description below for this video and I will have links to the song series because I tackle a lot of this um, content that I'm doing here in that song series where I dedicate a song to each sign. It was such a fun thing to do. I really love that series. So do check it out if you haven't seen it already. Um, so yeah, click on the description. You'll be able to click on your sign and watch about your sign. Or um, at the end, I'll, I'll put some links as well. I'll, I'll figure that out. But in the song series, I basically ran the diagram in a, in a different way to how you know the wheel of astrology in Western astrology it actually runs the opposite way to what I'm doing but there's a reason as to why I'm running it this way so I'm gonna write summer at the top here I'm gonna write the word fall which is of course the American for autumn which is what we say here and we've got winter down below all right so this was the diagram that I was using in the song series and I was running it this way round okay round like this 
Normally in Western astrology it goes the other way but there is a teacher that I really admire and respect who runs it this way and he likes to run it this way deliberately because in particular he likes this word fall and he says this is where we fall into the underworld. And this is important in understanding why there's reputational damage to certain signs, okay? Because we've fallen into the underworld. And why is it the underworld? Why, is, why does it have a bad reputation? Well, a long time ago, you know, when people were just um, living in their little huts and they'd have their bread and their oil and, you know, eating simple food and go out and look at the stars and observe and see all this stuff. Back then, there weren't antibiotics. They were, you know, we didn't have the medication we have now. There wasn't central heating and refrigerators. And now we live these unusual lives where, and, and are they good lives? I'm not sure, you know, where we could be um, eating an ice cream, wearing a t-shirt in winter. That's very strange, right? <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. Back then, when you fall into this, into winter, you don't know if you're going to make it or not right? This is serious business. This is survival. This is, are we going to make it to the next spring, right? And, and that's still life today for so many people, you know? It's, 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 um, we're a very privileged few, really, who, when you look at the statistics on wealth and money and things like that, they say if you've got a laptop, then you're extremely rich. And uh, yeah, that's, so this, this is still tough. And um, a lot of the signs here and a lot of what's going on down here so we've got um, Libra is here but Scorpio we are definitely talking about today Scorpio in particular you know I think the fear is the greatest here um, of this time are we going to survive you know and that's where a lot of reputational damage happens definitely here and we're definitely going to talk about this sign a lot today we are going to talk about Aries as well um, so I've got a few and I'm going to write down the ones that we're going to look at. So Aries, we're going to look at, we're going to look at Leo, we're going to look at Virgo. I think these have suffered. Who else has suffered? Scorpio, definitely. We're going to go deep into Scorpio. That's a place where we're going to spend a lot of time. Capricorn, we're going to spend some time in Capricorn as well. Because what are the others, right? I'll put numbers for the others. So let's have a look. So I've got Aries. I've written in Aries. I'm going to write in words the ones I want to talk about. Leo, Virgo, Scorpio. So who have we got here? We've got two, Taurus, three, uh, Gemini, <laughs> four, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, seven, Libra. So, I mean, everybody likes these. Taurus, we all like Taurus, don't we? You can always hit up a Taurus for a bit of cash, right? That's <laughs> They've always got it. It's true. Uh, three. Who's up here? Oh, Gemini. Have a chat with Gemini. Joke around with Gemini. They love it. They're fun. They're fun people. They're having a ball up there. Comedians, all cool people. I mean, com comedians are down here too. Nine. Everyone loves a Sagittarian, right? Don't have to talk about them. Who else we got here? Cancer. Well, do they have reputational damage? I mean, maybe. Maybe because they've got a bit of a crab-like thing going on. They go into their shell. Um, very sensitive. Uh, but I find that beautiful, so I don't, I don't see that as a problem. Leo we'll talk about, Virgo we'll talk about. Libra, everyone loves a Libran, right? Nine, Sagittarius, everybody loves them. Capricorn, look, I'm going to write them down because I think they have suffered. Um, Aquarius, yeah, we could talk about Aquarius too, but I mean, I'll put 11 here. We're not going to talk about them. And uh, 12, Pisces. Again, Jupiterian, everyone loves a Jupiterian. Everyone loves a Pisces. They don't have too much of a problem. Maybe they're a bit spacey. Maybe that's the criticism there, if I had to give one. But, but I, think, uh, I don't think they've suffered too much. Aquarius, have they suffered? I think their quirkiness saves them. Like it's kind of, um, and, and, and um, the psych they're brilliant psychologists, natural psychologists of the zodiac. They've mastered the material world. And I tend to see this going up to here to me Pisces is a very special um, place that almost doesn't count and you get your most very deeply spiritual people here very advanced people Aquarius has, has basically mastered the material world um, and the psychological world when you come in here and into Pisces it's very spiritual um, and special and different but why Aries? Why do Aries people suffer? 
Well, look at that. I mean, it's Mars, right? We've got Aries suffering and Scorpio suffering. Mars. Mars, I think it's a big, strong energy that a lot of people don't... Um, hmm. Don't know how to handle sometimes. How about I say that? I heard a friend of mine who's a, she's got a lot in Aries and she told me that one of her friends, and I was thinking about this before preparing this video today because I'm shocked by it. I think it's awful. This is how much Aries has suffered. She told me that a friend of hers um, who was having a baby decided to have a C-section so that she wouldn't give birth to an Aries child. How awful is that, right? That is really, really, I mean, as do people do that? And it turns out that that person did. To me, I think that's really, um, that's using the knowledge of astrology, not in a, an empowering way or a good way at all. But, you know, there's my business, there's your business, and there's God's business. That's a very Byron Katie thing. And yeah, I, I mean, some people, and, and the reason that she wanted to have a C-section, she didn't want an Aries child, was because she thought the child would be too willful and too strong and difficult to handle or control or something like that. I mean, oh, it, that sort of stuff is upsetting to me, but um, that people would do that, you know, because every single bit of this is wonderful in my eyes. Like, it, it, there's beauty in all of it. So, okay, what's the beauty here in Aries? Well, you know, on that, um, I actually did work at a school one time. This was some time ago before I uh, got into my profession here in England. And I worked with some very strong and willful children. And for me, I just thought, wow, you know, you just give them a bit of love turn them in the right direction and they are the most incredible people on the planet. I don't know what their star signs were, but I have worked with children who are, um, you know, tough kids, right? These were, I was in the student services section where they would send the toughest kids and these children would, you know, punch a hand through the window because they were angry and then come in with bleeding hands and things like that. Crazy kids, right? But, you know, I got to know them. And when you get to know these strong Mars people, they're magnificent and so powerful and so capable and so able and so um, magnificent leaders you come out of here. Aries is wonderful. Aries is the start of the hero's journey. And that's why I've depicted it this way, because this is a really lovely um, thing of the hero's journey and, of course, the fall into the underworld. You know where it's dark, there's less light, there's all that kind of thing. We've got beautiful summer sun up here, seasons wise. But this is the start of the hero's journey. This is the start. Aries is the start. Aries is the excitement of beginning. Aries is, you know, um, you're going to set off on a journey. So you're starting a business or maybe you're starting a relationship. You're starting something new, right? And you're excited. And you've got all this summer sun to look forward to. And you've got all this, this glorious, I guess it's a kind of a honeymoon period, really. It's wonderful, you know. What could be more, um, what could be more beautiful and exciting? All this summer sun, you know. And you notice here, I've kind of these guys. I've left them off because it's true. I think, I think these don't have um, a bad reputation. Aries does though, and it's because of the Mars energy. And we're going to get into Mars when we get into Scorpio. Let's keep going here a little bit. Sun, right? Sun's another big, powerful, strong energy. Why have I written Leo down? What's the reputational damage that they've suffered? I was thinking about this today. And I think that they've suffered from a reputation of being a bit narcissistic, right? Uh, I do think that that is the reputational damage um, that they've suffered too. And look at that, another leader, right? So you've got Aries as a leader. And Leo the leader, for sure. Leo is the king, you know, Leo is in charge. So, yeah, they've, they've suffered um, reputational damage as well for being too strong, for being, um, for being self-centered, for being narcissistic, for being, I guess you could say, I mean, could you say all about themselves? Hmm. But I think that's a bit short-sighted, you know, it, it's not looking deep enough. 
It's not appreciating the beautiful qualities of the sun. Virgo. Virgo is another one that I've indicated as having some reputational problems. Virgo, why? Because I think Virgo can be um, very precise and very analytical and very much um, a person on the opposite end of a Virgo and gay is if, 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 if Virgo is only using the third eye and not balancing it out with heart energy, that other person will feel dissected, right? It's very analytical. And um, I think one of the reputational problems with Virgo is perhaps be because of that powerful analytical ability, calculating mind and all that kind of thing, and they've, they've gotten to have fun. Unlike mm, Gemini, which I didn't indicate, who is lighthearted and who is incredibly fun and funny, and which is Mercury, right? We've got Mercury in a different way here. Uh, another thing I think Virgo has suffered from unfairly, actually, reputation-wise, is Virgo the virgin, Virgo being too pure, Virgo not being sensual. That's not true at all. It's an earth sign, right? Very um, earthy and beautiful and, and you know, that's, that's incorrect, in my opinion. We've got to remember that it's an earth sign. We're going to leave Scorpio for a moment because I'll switch diagram to get to Scorpio because I want to go deep with them. How are we doing for time? 17 minutes. I knew I was going to talk for a long time today. Capricorn. What have we got going on here? Yes. Have they suffered? I think so. I think um, Capricorn people have probably suffered because of Saturn, right? Saturn being the ruler. And why, why has Capricorn suffered? Um, in the song series, I talk about the marshmallow test and how um, these psychiatrists gave these marshmallows to little children. And they said, they put the marshmallow on the plate and they said um, to the child, who's probably about, I think, four or five, and they, they're in a room and they say to the child, I'll give you one marshmallow now. You can eat one right now, or you can have two when I come back in 15 minutes. I'm gonna go away for a little bit, I'm gonna come back, and in 15 minutes, I'll bring another one, you can eat two. So clearly the child's going to be rewarded for waiting, right? Um, and so, you know, can the child wait? And they've done all these psychological tests and experiments and, um, and they've discovered that the kids who can wait are um, kind of likely to succeed in the long term. These are long term visionary people and they've done tests and they followed these kids over many years and um, have discovered that these children um, over here in the Capricorn area, these children become CEOs and they can delay gratification. And so, you know, they've got the long term thing going on here. Now, I think what kind of reputational damage could be here is that, well, I think, I mean, Capricorn could be perceived as, um, as being boring, maybe, I don't know, at a stretch, like, I, I don't think so. Remember, I don't have any judgment for any of these, and I love all of these, okay? So I don't have any, um, any of that, but other people do, and I think Capricorn has um, suffered unfairly for that, you know, and I like, I like these people who, who can wait, who take their time, who, you know, but they are leaders here. And, and what's the difference of leadership here? Again, look at all the people who are suffering. Again, Virgo makes wonderful leaders. They really do. Um, a lot of prime ministers come out of this uh, part of the zodiac. Uh, a lot of successful people come out of Virgo. But these are all the leaders. Look at all the leaders are suffering, right? We will go into Scorpio in a moment. The diagram will change. This thing will probably, 24 minute mark, it's gonna cut. So, um, but let's keep going with Capricorn. Okay, so Capricorn, they are leaders coming out of here, for sure. These are the CEOs are coming out of here. But these are the kind of CEOs. So you've got your king coming out of here, right? You've got your CEOs coming out of here. What kind of leader comes out of Aries? I mean, this is kind of, um, I would say sort of warmongering, I don't know, like, or maybe athletic, or I don't know, something like that. But it's, it's, the CEOs are coming out of here. And what did I want to say about that? 
could be perceived as boring. What other reputational terms? Well, I mean, the thing I wanted to say here was that um, Capricorn, Capricornian leaders or people who come out of here, these are the people, they're Saturnians, right? They're the Saturnian leaders. So they've worked their way up from the mailroom to get to that top position. They've done every single job in the business and they can do it all. And, you know, if someone doesn't turn up or it's the chief cook and bottle washer, it's the Scott McNeely of some microsystems kind of guy who says, um, you know, okay, we need to stack chairs. I'll stack chairs. Like, tell me, uh, you know, what do we need to do? These are the hands on deck people for sure. Um, Capricorns make great leaders. And, you know, I personally, I mean, I, the Saturnian people and those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know, I'm a fan of Saturn always have been always will be i think it's just such a such an underrated energy and planet um, and very misunderstood saturn is very misunderstood why is saturn so misunderstood i mean that's encapsulating this whole area which by the way we're going to be moving into right 2020 it's coming the shift is coming saturn's going to be at home saturn's going to be happy who is saturn who why has he suffered the old man of the zodiac this is going to cut. I've only got two minutes. The old man of the Zodiac. He is, and one of the things I've said in the song series is that he's a cosmic personal trainer, right? And, you know, he, he's that cosmic personal trainer. He will get you the, I don't know, the, the beach ready physique or whatever it is you want. Like, he's the one who you're doing stomach crunches on the floor and you can't do any more and he says you've got two more and you say i haven't got any more and he, he says yes you've got two more he makes you do it and you do it and yes it's painful but you're the one at the beach looking fantastic or whatever i don't know um i don't do any of that i don't bother i should i probably should do that gym sort of stuff anyway but um yeah it's like he is the cosmic personal trainer. He whips you into shape. He gets you there. He gets you over the line. Hard taskmaster, but my goodness, you will achieve and do things that you never thought you could do. Sadly misunderstood, you know? Um, sadly misunderstood because people only see the pain and we're gonna get to that. We are gonna get to that with Scorpio. I'm just looking at the time, 23 minutes. See, I know when the camera's gonna cut. Now's the time me to rub this out and we'll get into Scorpio because I'm going to shift the diagram because I want us to focus on that part of the zodiac because it's so amazing there's so much that goes on there what hasn't cut yet how fascinating well I might as well tell you some more about Capricorn then or a bit more about Saturn what else is he so I've said cosmic personal trainer because I've got a lot of analogies he's also did I have something about parking ticket inspector? He gives you a fine. I mean, he's the karmic accountant, right? And sometimes you're cashing in, sometimes you're paying. Um, he checks everything twice, karmic accountant, okay? Moves slowly, checks everything twice. And when you look at his movement as he goes around the zodiac, he does this kind of up and down. He goes, yes, he goes around, but he does this kind of Hi everyone, sorry the camera got cut. I was predicting it. I didn't need astrology to predict it. I just knew that this camera is gonna fall apart as it does at the 24 minute mark. I now know why. Thank you, Christina. That was so amazing that you found that out for me. I'll get a new camera. I'm working it out. It's all in the works, it's all happening. Gives me a chance to draw another diagram. And you know, it's amazing as I was just um, putting the files on the computer and having a little think about it and looking at Aries, Leo, Virgo, Scorpio and Capricorn. We're going to go deep into Scorpio right now because that's one of my favorite places to be. But the other ones, I was looking at it and it, they are all leaders and it kind of made me realize that like, you know, okay, they have not a good reputation. See, why didn't I choose Aquarius? Because Aquarius is one of the people. You know, the humanitarian is there. Everybody loves Aquarius, you know? Yeah. Who doesn't love an Aquarian, right? I love Aquarius. I think they're great. Um, and the Jupiterians, we love the Jupiterians, you know? We do. 
moon people we love moon people right mother you know but we resent look at this a kind of masculine energy except virgo i suppose but i mean virgo is quite driven it's a career place you know, Venus doesn't like being in Virgo, you see? And it's interesting. So we've got a theme actually happening here. And I was thinking about, do we resent our leaders? You know, is that something in the collective psyche um, that's going on, that's just there, you know, and that astrology is revealing to us? Just making sure that it's recording. It looks like it is. So let me draw the next diagram. Let's talk about Scorpio. Come on, let's get in here because this is... This is the place that have suffered the most, you Scorpio people, you eighth house people. It's very sad. It's very, um, it's very unfortunate because this is one of the. This is, I mean, it's. Let's face it. It's one of the most exciting places. It really is. And I, you know, there are a couple of people that are just bringing to mind. Um, Osho is one of them. And one of you guys mentioned on one of the recent videos about Osho having lots of planets there. Uh, Julian Assange is another, right? Princess Diana. I'm, let me bring her up, actually, because, I mean, she's got some of all that going on. She's also quite the humanitarian. So, too, is um, Marlon Brando. Let's have a look at Princess Diana, though. She's very interesting. She's a good study. She's got... Um, let's have a look here. It's always good to work with the royals because their lives are so well documented and you can trust the times and there's, there's a lot of good information coming from them. They make great case studies. Yeah, I mean, she's got her eighth house lit up. Oh, look at that. And she's a Scorpio as well. There you go. I mean, look, it, as I say, terrific part of, look at the people coming out there. They're so interesting, right? Um, so I love this, this whole thing. We're going to get into this. And I have to draw the Vedic chart here for this because one of the ways, I don't know, I just, the Vedic chart just speaks to me the North Indian one, it just, I just, I get it. I, there's something about it that's, um, and I don't know why. There's, yeah, there's something going on there. Anyway, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at Scorpio. I'm going to kind of really highlight it. Okay, eighth house. Um, Scorpio. Why has this place suffered so much reputational damage? What's going on? Why? A lot happens here. Where do I begin? I, I haven't prepared any notes for this. This is just coming straight out of my head. We're going on a journey. We're going on an adventure. Let's go here. And one of, one of the things that I see when I'm here is... Um, when I was young, we went to um, Springbrook National Park in Australia. It was a school trip that we went on. And we went deep into the forest, into the jungle. It's kind of jungle-like forest in Australia. It's a rainforest. There we go. That's the phrase I'm looking for, deep into the rainforest. And it, it was grey. There were clouds. It was a bit dark. And we went um, walking many hours, and we got to this place where there's a very, very deep pool of water, um, a kind of a, a, a rock pool with a great big fountain going into it, but it's very dark. The water was just black. And um, deep, deep, deep pool of water. And we were told that it was 80 meters deep in some places, and some of it was unknown. Like people just didn't know how deep it was. And to me, that is this part here this is water here you've also got water here and you've got water here as well but this is that deep 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 dark still water that you don't know how deep it is in the forest in a deep in a forest as well um you know you scream no one hears you all that kind of thing <laughs> all right so scary right this is not uh, the friendliest of places potentially but but beautiful and tranquil and um mysterious and what else is here? And I remember when I went into that water, um, all of us, I think we were about, I don't know, 12, we were very young, and I had my swimmers on, and I, but I went as far as my knees, and because you could wade in a little bit before it became boom, like totally scary deep. 
Um, I remember going up to my knees and just absolutely freezing and, and being paralyzed and not able to go any further. And so many children went in and they swam and went under the waterfall and I couldn't do all of that. But, um, but it's an amazing place and I, it was funny because I was reading um, this morning, I thought, oh, let's reread this book as I keep rereading and rereading and I had a little read of Scorpio in here and, and um, Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda do mention um, a deep dark forest for this, this area. Hidden places, secluded places, mysterious places, right? Um, and I suppose there is a, a scary element to that. What else goes on here that's causing reputational damage? So there's that. There's th this potential scary vibe, mysterious stuff going on here. Things are hidden here. Um, what else goes on here? Some very functional and practical things go on here as well. So um, one of the things I associate it with, okay, is, is a couple of things, uh, very practical. Perhaps I'm wearing some sort of Vigoan hat as I think about this, but um, you know, it's very analytical <laughs> and practical what I'm going to say. So when you go to the bathroom, for example, okay, you do it in private. You close the door, right? Nobody sees. Okay, so you go to the bathroom. What happens when you go to the bathroom? Release, right? You release, you let go of all your stuff, okay? And that is one of the big things. If you've got any energy here, you're gonna to wanna to have to get good at letting go. Because if you don't, life is going to be difficult, right? So going to the bathroom is a very sort of earthy thing to say, or very practical thing to say, a very strange thing to say, but it's true. This is a part of Zodiac where hidden. What happens behind closed doors? Yeah, what are other things that happen behind closed doors? It's not just going to the bathroom, being intimate with a partner, right? That's beautiful, right? But I mean, um, you know, and there's a lot to be said there too. Uh, but the, this is, to me, it's a, it's a point of release. When you're looking at, say for example, something like going to the bathroom, what do you do? You let go of all your rubbish right and I and I think that's what's happening with this part of the zodiac I think people are associating this place with the crap and not with the letting go okay so that's what's happening unfortunately um, people don't look at this and go oh wow this is this could be the place where you are purified the most because that is the real potential of here the most, that's what I see. And, and the other, one of the other things I see about this place is that um, in terms of the hero's journey, in terms of coming here from that Aries, that number one spot where you are just setting off on a journey with all this hope and all this excitement and I'm going to conquer and I'm going to lead and I'm going to, you know, all those beautiful Mars things that you start the journey with. And you've been through some of this and you've been through what like a relationship or something and 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 you know you're, you're here and you're starting to it's getting a bit tough right um you've clocked up some things by now on this hero's journey you've clocked up some things and let's say for example god is there and god says god gives you an opportunity and he says look you're at this place, you can hand over all your deepest, darkest stuff to me now. But if you do that, it's, everyone's going to see, right? And do you do it? Are you brave? Do you do it? Do you let your stuff be seen? People don't want to do that. You know, it, that's hard. It would take courage, and this is a fictional example, I'm just pulling this out of my head to say that, you know, if God's standing here and he says, hand over your stuff, how many people do it? You know, and, and he's asking you that because we're heading into winter here. It's, it's going to be tough up here. You don't want to be carrying extra baggage. You don't want that. And the people who successfully let go, the people who successfully give it up, and, and you know, they can emerge in that beautiful they can be leaders come out of here in, in that beautiful fire 
um, that'll be earthed and, you know, communicated and shared. And I mean, it, it's fantastic, right? Um, the rest of the journey can be absolutely fantastic if you let go of your deepest, darkest stuff, if you're brave, if you, you know, and allow it to be seen by whom, not by people or the public. It's a spiritual thing. You know, and, and, and there is this thing of um, airing your dirty laundry and, and all of that, right? It, it's not so much about um, that other people need to see. This is, this is between you and you and the divine. It's extremely deep. I mean, this is just a, this is just a glorious, beautiful part of the zodiac that unfortunately has suffered. To me, it's, it's the point of the purest purification. You can achieve it here. I don't think that's a thing of Pisces. Um, to me, that's a, like a quantum soup. It's different here, yeah. and, and, and this is extremely special. So um, again, another chunk of water that's, that's just incredibly special. But to me, this is... Um, Drama, excitement, there's so much. I could, I could go on how much? Away? 12 minutes. I mean, look, I, I could just keep going. Why else has Scorpio suffered? I probably, I would have covered it in the song dedication. The song that I chose was In Excess, New Sensation. And that's, you see, the choice of that song here, the new sensation. That, to me, that's a, a way of saying the possibility here is to be completely pure. Right? If you really let go of all your stuff properly, <laughs> using the bathroom analogy, you know, recycling happens here. Transformation happens here. It's a place of tremendous transformation, but the most transformation is possible here. So this is wonderful. The best um, emotional trauma counselors <coughs> come out of here as well. Sorry. Um, the best trauma counsellors come out of here. You know if you've got a person who's got planets here, who's got energy here, who's got you know, lifetimes of experience here, Katie down here, any of that, planets here, this person, oh my God, they can, boy, can they help you heal. Um, and they can, I mean, they're magicians who live down here. So... Yeah, I don't know if um, if I've managed to change your mind about any reputation or damage that you might think is associated with Scorpio, but honestly, it's it's just such a beautiful, special part of the zodiac, much underrated and um, and much misunderstood, you know. But those who seek, those who dare, those who have courage. You don't want courage if you're hanging out in here at all. Um, you really have tremendous potential to achieve a lot in this lifetime. So don't feel bad. They say your moon's down there. Don't feel bad about that. Don't feel not at all. I, in fact, I know an extremely, extremely successful person. I'm just going to bring him up. Moon in the um, moon in the eighth. And yes, he lost his mother at a young age. You know. Um, but figured out so much stuff. This person figured out so much and um, transformed and, and achieved a huge amount. So don't feel bad if you have anything there. I know that sometimes people think, oh no, I've got this there and uh, that's bad and no, 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 no. Potential, the potential there for you is, um, is very great. It's exciting, it's one of the most exciting parts of the zodiac and you look at Julian Assange right got a lot of planetary energy down there he's brought light to a lot of secrets and things he's, he's brought a lot of truth um, he's actually played that godlike character who brings things out and, and brings things up and you know um, imagine the fearlessness needed to do that Princess Diana right there's a person who um, potentially very heroic and you know, exposed some things about the royal family uh, that people didn't know before. She's got the sun down in the eighth there. She's got Scorpio ascendant. 
right? So she's a great example of that. And look at, you know, wow, what a, she was such a wonderful person. Um, Osho, let's bring him up. Osho's got a stack, of, he's got loads down there. Uh, let's have a look at you, Osho. I've been listening to some Osho lately. Who doesn't like a bit of Osho in the evenings to unwind? Um, let's bring him up, come on. Oh, look, he's got five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, that's just, he's got a truckload in there. I'm telling you now, he is, and it's Sagittarius there. I mean, it's just all going on. This is great. Sun in Scorpio there. That's beautiful. Deep, right? Um, amazing. So please don't feel like, oh, no, I've got planets there and it's all over and I can't do anything. And No, 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 no. Oh, you can do a lot. You can do a lot with that. And you can enthrall people. I mean, it's just because the depths are just so phenomenal, right? You can, um, what was that thing that Osho says? Baby, my whole work is to confuse you, right? He, I mean, he can, he can take someone's mind and do all kinds of things. I mean, it's just amazing. It's, it's, I could keep going, but I'm not going to keep going because I've spoken for 17 minutes and far too long. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's first in a series of bad reputation we're going to deal with some of that next week um, and uh, you know stick around on the channel I've got coaching videos I've got other things going on it's all happening so I want to thank you so much for subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.